Hello, and welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, rate, review, and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We want to hear your thoughts on the movies and shows we review. Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel, and we will read them during the show. Or reach out to us on social media. We love talking all things entertainment and pop culture with you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Look around, everybody on you. <laughs> Ashley, are you ready for the Renaissance? I am so, so, so ready. It's funny because it felt like it took forever to get here. And then this week, being the week of Beyonce, has just flown by. So what I'm hoping is that time just slows down on Friday. <laughs> and those three hours are just everything and more that I know it will be. Like, I always say, when Beyonce starts most of her shows, she always said, are you ready to be entertained? Because ain't nobody else do it quite like B. So I I am ready, y'all. My outfit situation never came together, but it's okay. It ain't about me. It's about going to see this fantastic <laughs> show that everybody else, except for me at this point, pretty much has seen that I know. So I'm the last of the bunch, but it's going to be great. It's going to be great, Miami. It's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. And like I said, with our conversation with Erica Gray, check out that recap of The Blackening. Mm -hmm. She was our special guest. I mean, Beyonce out here changing all types of outfits on a regular. She even busted out um, Vic onto her set list in the her third night in Atlanta. So who knows what type of goodies she has towards the end of this tour so i'm excited for you ashley and i cannot wait to get your thoughts uh speaking of that we're going to do a special renaissance recap uh in september i don't know if it'll be in time for beyonce's birthday but you know virgo season you're welcome <laughs> we will do our very best but yeah we're gonna have a, a a gaggle of girlies on with us to discuss this i say gaggles and like two other people but <laughs> y'all know what i mean it's gonna be a good time to get a chance to chat um from someone who went and saw her overseas to those of us who have gotten a chance to see her in the states so absolutely should be fun man i cannot wait i part part of me feels like i should have gone to the la show part of me feels like <laughs> But that's part even of me further feels like away. I should have went to Atlanta with so, all the black folks. Atlanta was on my list when the lottery stuff happened. I would have absolutely gone to Atlanta, but I just feel like for her birthday, it's going to be the show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the show. So we'll see. But hey, hey, I'm not complaining. We we gonna do a big Miami. We gonna do a big. So oh, I'm excited. Thank you for absolutely. that. Absolutely. Give me a chance absolutely. to fangirl out for just a second. <laughs> of course. Of course. All right, Ashley. So we have quite a few items to go through for our headlines and our hot topics. So let's get started. Starting on a somber note, especially for our country, Hawaii and Maui experience the deadliest wildfire in U.S. history with a death toll of 106 and thousands of misplaced citizens in Maui. Ashley, this, when this was going on, it was unbelievable. The before and after pictures of Lahania is absolutely heartbreaking. Celebrities are extremely vocal. We have Oprah who is hands-on in the recovery efforts. We have Jason Momoa. I'm looking at the BBC here. He's telling people to not visit Maui. 
he says in the statement, he says, Maui is not the place to have your vacation right now. Do not travel. Do not convince yourself that your presence is needed on an out island that is suffering this deeply. On his social media, he shared a video of a 44-year-old um, resident saying, you know, people who lived here haven't been in, haven't been to the beach, but the next day after the fires, she saw people in the water and she's like, you know, people have died and, you know, they're absolutely affected by what they're lost. And, you know, it's not the time for tourism. The Rock also has spoken up talking about how sad he is over the devastation. Ashley, um, have you visited this area of Hawaii? I know you've had the opportunity to visit um, several other islands, but just curious on your thoughts on this natural disaster. Yeah, I actually, I have not been able to make it to Maui. I've only been to the island of Oahu so far and stayed in Honolulu. And so... Um, when I first heard this news, I had been talking about, oh, I would love to go back at some point and do some island hopping and make it to Maui and some of these other places. But my heart is definitely broken for everybody that's been impacted, all the folks who are still trying to figure out if their loved ones are safe. Um, I haven't even looked at the before and after pictures. I think I'm just kind of taken aback by just some of the accounts of what happened, saying that it kind of looked like end of days and all this and that. Like, I cannot imagine how it must have felt to be there and deal with this and go through this and just breaks my heart. My visit there is one of the most beautiful places that I've ever had the opportunity to visit. And it wasn't just beautiful because of the views, but the people, the people were so lovely. And so I've definitely just been thinking about and praying for them throughout this whole situation because, you know, Mother Nature is scary. Like, I don't know any other way to exactly. put it. This stuff that is just so completely out of our hands um, is just terrifying. So I hate that there's so much suffering going on in Hawaii right now. And just wondering, you know, if there's going to be any opportunities in the future for us to do more to be preventative um, when it comes to, you know, natural disasters. Yeah. And it is worth mentioning, you know, we are coming off of one of the hottest Julys on record, right? So situations like this, they're not going to be going away. And it's just completely heartbreaking. So definitely praying for the residents of Maui at this time. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch some gears here on a very pink note. I am looking at Vulture. Barbie wins box office beach off against the dark night. Ashley, Barbie has officially out earned the dark night, which was Warner Brothers number one movie of all time. It says currently Barbie has earned $1.2 billion globally, making Greta Gerwig the highest grossing female director in a domestic box office. What do you think about a Barbie doll, you know, giving it to a broody bat? <laughs> I didn't think that I would live to see the day, Delora. No, it's definitely an amazing feat. I mean, we're talking about the juggernaut that is superhero action type films and series and Christopher Nolan's trilogy is beloved. So the fact that Barbie yes. has been able to come through with this very compelling film not it's not just hype guys very compelling film and move the needle like this especially I think we talked about it a few times never knowing if movies at the theater were ever going to get to kind of pre-pandemic levels so mm -hmm. it's super impressive it has it was one of my favorite movie going experiences in a long time because of the hype surrounding it because of the 
dressing up and excitement and then the movie did not disappoint so well deserved and excited to see some girl power at the box office what about you exactly i mean what i love most about it is it's literally everything that people i'm imagining old school hollywood would you know shun it's a female centric and really, really pink, you know? <laughs> and I love that we're at this moment in time where we're literally embracing it in, in all its glory. I mean, I'm out here with my pink glasses as we speak. I think it's also significant. Um, Randall Park, um, our fave from Fresh Off the Boat, and he's also um, our favorite agent in Marvel projects. Uh, I'm looking at Entertainment Weekly. He has here, he cautions Hollywood is taking the wrong lessons from Barbie success. He's like, the idea is, according to Hollywood, make more movies about toys. And he's like, no, make more movies by and about women. I appreciated his take on that because I can absolutely see um, execs being like, make more toy movies and we've seen it we already yeah. heard about the role Polly pocket Polly pocket, pocket. <laughs> which don't get me wrong i fuck with Polly pocket like that was my stuff when i was a kid i used to carry around a little uh there was a little um yellow one that case that i used to have and it was Polly pocket like i that was an exciting announcement for me personally but i get his point especially because i feel like then it's really just about maximizing profits it's not really yes. about the story and the movie going yes. experience yes 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 well bravo margot robbie <laughs> i love how side sebi she is i love how yes she's gorgeous but she is one hell of an actress and she's very hands-on with the projects she picks and i really appreciate her and her grind so bravo sis don't let the big eyes and blonde hair fool you all right Girl, so Chloe Bailey goes on these internets to give us a story time. She said she and her sis, who were excited to be in Atlanta for the Renaissance, okay, they ordered vegan burgers and they found out that those burgers were not, in fact, vegan, but beef. <laughs> Chloe said that Hallie was laughing and she said that she was crying. After 10 years of veganism, to be tripped over, tripped up over someone else's mistake. Ashley, how would you take this type of news? <laughs> I I would, I'm more of a Hallie than I am a Chloe in this type of situation. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I don't think I would get emotional about it. I'd just be like, hey, what's happening? Like, I watched the video. I taught her what she said. I still don't know what a brand burger is. But clearly the employee or whoever she spoke to did not take her seriously. Because what you mean? Yes, it's a vegan burger in one breath and then the next breath. Oh, it's a brand burger. Um, You can get sued for stuff like that. So they should be glad that this was not one of those cases, whatever hotel it is that they were staying at. But ultimately, I mean, I guess it's just a lesson to cut that mofo open, maybe, before you take a bite to just double check that it's a Beyond Burger and not beef. But I also love the tidbit in there where she said, Hallie was like, this is really good. Are you sure this is a vegan burger? I have not had a Beyond Burger yet, but that was not an endorsement. You know what I'm saying? That was like, yeah. don't sound like this quite on par, so... That is so funny. Somebody on the internet had me rolling. They were like, yeah, Hallie was laughing because she'd probably be sneaking sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and I would absolutely react the same way as Chloe because shout out to my fellow Cancer July 1st um, to my July 6th. Because I invested 10 years of my life to this lifestyle and you, you did what? It's you lied okay. to me. It's gonna be okay. No, thank you. <laughs> no way. H how dare they? So after this went viral, I'm looking at Newsweek. Slutty vegan ATL posted on their so social media that 
Chloe can have their slutty vegan for life. So shout out to <laughs> Pinky and M um, mm-hmm. for offering that to to the Baileys. And way to get a little pub in the process. Okay, black exactly. businesses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's they, I like, I like their sneakers. They have some sneakers. I don't know if they're in collaboration they? with Steve Madden or something. But when I saw them, I was like, I like those. So shout out to y'all. We have to check that out. All right. In set news, Ashley, Britney Spears is calling it quits with her husband of fourteen months, girl. They met in 2016 and married June 2022, shortly after hashtag free Britney. Um, it's kind of ugly out here in these streets, though, because there are rumors say stating that Britney cheated on Sam. Um, with there's plies. Also- <laughs> oh, first of all, that's Black Twitter <laughs> claiming that because Plies, if y'all ever go to his social media, he is hilarious. Okay. Mm. But he be losing it over Britney's dancing videos. <laughs> Real talk. And it's the funniest thing ever. And, you know, she does have a prenup. So shout out to Britney for that. But apparently he's out here saying, I'm going to reveal some unsavory information about Britney if she doesn't make adjustments to the prenup for somebody to been so in love this is getting ugly real quick Ashley I really hope that rumor is not true by the way laughing too much is really hurting my scalp I got some guys some boho locks and this is just tight can't be laughing too hard today <laughs> but um hashtag first world black girl problems seriously <laughs> seriously <laughs> oh me and my boho locks um anyway <laughs> <laughs> I really hope this rumor is not true because if it is, he is the trashiest of trash humans. Like, you're going to sit here and blackmail your wife and say that you're going to come out with embarrassing secrets. First of all, at this point, I don't know if there's any secrets you could release to Britney's that she might find embarrassing. Her whole life has been so public. What else you got to say, bro? Exactly. What else is there to say? Exactly. What else is there to say? You know what I'm saying? She about to release this book. She probably like, go ahead. Ain't nothing you got to say. I ain't already put in my book, you know? So, but I hope that's not true. Because if that's true, that's sad. Because then you just wonder about the character of the individual you ever loved and were married to and all that sort of thing. So. I always was curious about the relationship anyway, because, because she was in this conservatorship. It's like, how was she able to vet these guys you know, was it her team? Was it her? Was it a combo of the two? I'm going to be honest. Ever since Justin Timberlake, it feels like every dude she's gotten with is sleazy in some mm-hmm. specified or unspecified way. You know, Kevin Federline felt like a little bit of a hanger on her. I know now it seems like he's a great dad and takes good care of the boys and all that stuff. But when she got with him, when nobody team Kevin, um, you had the pop dude Very that true. she was messing with for a little bit who was a hanger on. I didn't know this man was only 29 years old. There's that fact oh, that I just found yeah. out about today. And I'm like, to, 40, like one or so. Yeah. And to the, your point about like where, the vetting process, where did you come from? Who are you? Yeah. Again, if this is true, after. you ain't never love her. You just saw the, you, you saw her for the image and the possibilities of what she could bring to you and give you versus ever loving her. And that makes me really sad for Brittany. Like I think what Brittany as the rest of us need more than anything is love. And she already been falling out with her whole family for the most part. So she just ain't, she don't need this blow. She doesn't. I mean, everyone needs some type of stability and the fact that she doesn't have it to your point with her family and you hope to get it with someone you commit your life to, i.e. a husband, who does she have with her newfound freedom? Exactly. Hoping for the best for you, Brittany. Especially people that she's not paying, right? He's supposed to be somebody that is not on the payroll, supposedly. Terrible. Awful. All right, so let's get into these hot topics in a turn that I never thought would happen, 
Usher and Kiki Palmer linked up for this new music video called Boyfriend that premiered today. The hype around this yesterday, Ashley, was everything. Like, everything. One of my favorite tweets came from Saeed. He was like, bitch, we live in an age of monsters and miracles. Like, <laughs> had me rolling. Like, like, what are what are y'all about to do with this? So the video comes out today. And still, it's getting overwhelming praises for peak pettiness in the iconic words of Beyonce. Petty, 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 petty. <laughs> When I watched the video this afternoon, it had 632,000 views. I was one of those people at that time. It was a fantastic video. Sit the pettiness aside, that was a great video. Like, even just the lookalike situation and the dancing, because, you know, Kiki can dance as well. So it was just a good time. Kiki keeps the job. Kiki multi hyphen it of course she yes. can dance it was just it was a good time just watching it but there was something about it that made me kind of emotional i don't know if it was because i changed the whole time i changed the whole time but it was I think- peak usher during confessions era with the shirtless let's get ready before I start this video or you don't have to call it was a little bit of a look from you don't have to call too yes. but I don't even think it was that I think it was so much more about like me feeling something for Kiki and the fact that even though this <laughs> is incredibly petty uh decision I'm I'm here for it like I think after the situation with her boyfriend slash father of her child I was like what's gonna happen like this situation really was upsetting for everybody who has loved her and supported her i wondered how she was going to navigate it so to kind of get the last laugh with usher in this way yeah i just i just really enjoyed it it was very satisfying for me absolutely and usher is an absolute menace because yes he is the words of the song about yes your boyfriend's looking for me he can find me with you wherever you are Sir, sir, and he was looking real good in this video too. And the funny thing is, Usher is married, right? Like the fact that yes! Usher out here with a whole wife, and people still are so and threatened Sharon. by this man. Yes, people are still so don't don't go to an Usher show with your girl, or your wife, because she's gonna get taken by Usher. Usher, a full married man, but y'all still shaking in y'all boots. It's hilarious. He was looking good though. He still pulled out the the boobage and the <laughs> abs. Shout out, sir, 40. Yes, Gave sir. Gave us a little body, yaddy, yaddy. But I, the only thing that I wish that they had put in this video, Kiki should have thrown on that same dress she had on when she went to the show. That was the only the thing I was thinking. Yes, I said, you should have thrown on that same yep. dress. I had the same thought, Ashley. Honestly, again, this level of pettiness brings me joy. Shout out, cancers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, it was unexpected and they exceeded my expectations so and it's perfect end of summer like bop yeah i already liked his other single that was released about we ain't good good but we still good i was liking i was digging that song and now you came out with this so you know go ahead and do your thing usher so how well placed was her jab in the video for you very i had already (laughs) i had already seen it seen that clip but very i mean uh, my 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 last thought about it was oh we single single you know what i'm saying like ain't no way you know we needed confirmation that your relationship was over yep that was the confirmation y'all relationship is over and kiki palmer's uh baby daddy confirmed to people.com that he has moved on um aimed the relationship controversy and that he is out here looking to be an aspiring actor so good luck with him and <laughs> his endeavor ridiculous ridiculous decision we all make mistakes but ooh, that was painful she, kiki said what you're not gonna do is publicly shame me ooh. so speaking of mess our final hot topic today ashley Woo! were you a fan of the blind side were I you wa- 
I watched it. I watched hoopla. it. I love Sandra Bullock, so I was excited when she was up for an Oscar Same. for it. But the story itself, I mean, I, I don't really, especially at this point in my life, get down with the whole white savior trope. So <laughs> I'm not particularly moved um, by that tale. And so when I, when I read this too, I was like, oh, where we need to meet at, they acting up. You know what I'm saying? Because this was wild y'all had this man in a conservatorship Conservatorship? girl let me get into this so we are talking about michael Orr, who is the real life gentleman who was depicted in both the book and the film the blind side uh he did in fact go on to play professional football and I'm looking at Vox. This is a really good article. It says, was the blind side white savior narrative built on a lie? He filed a 14 page petition in Tennessee on Monday saying that he was never adopted by Sean and Leah Ann Tui. He said that he was tricked into a conservatorship and legal agreement that gave them legal authority to use his name in business deals less than three months after he turned 18. The petition also claims that the family use Orr's now 37 to make millions of dollars from the popular book in 2009 blockbuster film. This is sickening. Like he didn't find out that he was not adopted this year, February, 2023. So this is a new development. What's interesting is the family, the, the, the two E's, they, their lawyer, the same lawyer for Lizzo and Bill Cosby. Oh my God. Girl. (laughs) Book and busy. Right. They claim that he demanded $15 million for from them. They're claiming that he is um, shaking them down for some money and that he knew about the conservatorship. And this is a money grab for, for him and to drag their name in the mud. Ashley, my question to you is, was this family blindsided? <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, You're welcome. It's a no for me. The reason why it's a no for me is I sat back and examined both his comments and their comments. And the thing that gets me, I shouldn't say their comments, their lawyer's comments. The thing that gets me is this whole statement of the fact that they are a couple worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So why would they connive to withhold a few thousand dollars in profit participation payments from anyone, let alone from someone they loved as a son Mm. defies belief. What defies belief for me is if you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars and he supposedly is in some type of need where he would shake you down, you see him as your son. Why did, was that not an offer of help and support? Yep. your statements y'all want to make it seem like oh this is still our child like kept talking about him as if he's one of their children if this were w- really one of your children this wouldn't even be public because y'all would have gave him some nice amount of money a while ago if he actually is in need right if he actually is doing some type of shakedown so i'm team i'm team michael until i hear more at this point listen same now, the hoopla over this recent development have people wanting Sandra Bullock to give up her Oscar for portraying the mom in the movie. He has since come out to say Sandra Bullock did a great job in the movie and she does not need to revoke her Oscar. But is it taking it too far, Ashley? Yeah, because if that's the case, that means the you guys need to burn all your books that this movie was based off of. The author of that of said book would need to give back all the money and royalties from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't 
fault the works of art that have been created based on a possibly untrue narrative. Because what's going to happen now is there will be more works of art that are created based off of this saga, possibly. You know what I'm saying? Who oh, somebody said Netflix is working on their documentary as we speak. Exactly. I literally on Max right now keep getting the like thing to watch the Kim versus Kanye divorce documentary. So Do listen. I definitely don't care. I'm damn sure not, not clicking either. on that. This I'm is damn what her sure not clicking marriage? on that. Like, no, why? Not her fifth. Damn. It <laughs> is, though, isn't it? It's like, it's so... like a lot of marriages. <laughs> it is a lot of marriages. But the point is, I just, you know, I don't care to watch that in particular. But what I'm saying is, is that it's not the fault of the creative works of art in terms of the messiness of what actually happened, right? This just lends itself to further conversation, another story, another documentary, whatever that they want to create based off of what's happening now and the legalities that may happen because of this. But what I also want to say is, if this is absolutely true, like completely, completely true, they are disgusting people. For you to take advantage of an 18-year-old Black man who is in need in this way, what did Van say? He said Absolutely they just got disgusting. him a big body black boy to get him to go to Bama or what? what exactly. Song? Ole Miss. <laughs> Ole Miss. Yes, right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 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 And we've yeah. seen how predatory conservatorships are. Yes. So why is he still under a conservatorship? <laughs> why is he still under a conservatorship, people? Girl. Team Michael. What? What people need to do is leave Sandra Bullock alone. She is grieved. He, she and her family are grieving. Leave her alone. Exactly. Great they point. They got nothing to do with her. She just lost her partner to ALS. We talked about that last week. Leave her out this drama for sure. She living in we Austin. Love you. Trying to do, trying to do her thing and move forward with her life. There was a clip on CBS News. Her t- talking about her being a, a mother of black children. I was like, yes, Sandra gets it. <laughs> she gets it. We love her. What are we recapping for next week? All right. So we have not done a throwback since like April or something. So I guess it's time. Has it been that long? It's been a while. It's been Mm. a little bit. So I guess it's time. Decided to do a throwback of one of my absolute favorite 90s black rom-coms. And that is Boomerang Guys. Released back in 1992. (laughs) Starring Eddie Murphy, Robin Givens, Halle Berry, a cast of Black excellence, great yes, Black yes, comedians yes. in this film. And yeah, it just, it, your fave, who you talked My about fave. when we did They Call Tyrone. Absolutely. And it lends itself to some great conversation because Marcus was a trip. So, so looking forward to getting into it. And guys, if you have not seen Boomerang in a while, it's a good time to go pull it out of whatever VHS case, DVD case, streamer you can find it on. I know it's on Pluto TV right now for free on demand. So there you go, Delora. Looking forward to it. Yes, ma'am. All right, guys. Well, that is our episode for today. We so appreciate you rocking with us. Um, We will be back, as I mentioned, for that recap. And please... Share this episode with your friends, family, coworkers. Feel free to share this on social media. We're on all the things. And we appreciate your support as always. Until next time, be blessed. Bye.